I'm going to show you how to use flex time and logic to get your drums sounding super polished and tight. So let's assume you've finished tracking your drums, you've gone through and comped it, picked your best takes, and now we need to move on to this next step, flex time. The first thing we need to do is open up our mixer. So you can press X or you can click on the button up the top here. If you were the one tracking these drums, you might've already had this set up, but I'm gonna show you what you need to do next to make sure flex time works properly. You need to highlight all of your individual channels and in this little blank box here, we're gonna click on that and we're gonna click on group one. Now we're gonna click on it again and go to open group settings. Down the bottom, there's these settings. So if it's not open, click on this little arrow and this will pop up. All you really need selected is editing and quantize locked. What that means is if you edit one of these tracks, it's gonna edit all of them and the phase relationship between the mics will stay intact. That's super important for drums. Just make sure that they're all starting from the same point. Get your cut tool, highlight them all and trim so you've got a nice clean start point. Otherwise the group edits might not work properly. Now, before we go any further, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, leave me a comment, all of that stuff really helps the channel out. So now that we've got our group set up, we're gonna go back to the global window, close the mixer, and we're gonna press Command F, and that's gonna bring up this little icon here with the twisted audio. This is our flex time button. So you can see by default, it's gone to polyphonic. This is not what we want for drums. So click on this tab, let's go down to slicing. It's gonna analyze it, and it's gonna look something like this. Now what we need to do is tidy this up so that we get the best results out of flex time. Flex time setting markers where it finds transient peaks, but it's not perfect. So we need to fine tune this. You can see on the side here, this little green cue. Now what we want to do is turn some of these off because that's what's looking for that transient information. So basically we can just turn the room mics off. What we're going to do next is we're going to double click on kick on this little line above it. Now it's going to bring up the editor window here. Now what we need to do is come over and click on this button. It's going to show us all the markers that flex time has made. Now this little plus and minus button here, we're gonna click on the minus and try and fine tune this till we're only getting kicks. See, it's removing some stuff, going a bit too far there, plus, plus, and we're back. So that's gonna be pretty good for the kick. Now we probably don't need the kick out mic on here, so we can turn that one off. Let's go to snare, same thing. Let's just get rid of some of these notes in here that it's picking up. That looks pretty good. Do the same thing for snare bottom and just keep going through all your tracks, toms, Clean this up so all you get is the toms. As clean as you can get it. The places where you get the most stuff that's going to cause problems is in the hats, ride, china, overheads, those kind of mics. These transients aren't as clear as stuff like the kick and the snare. So let's just back this off a couple of clicks and that'll do. Same for the ride and the china. And then we're going to go to our overheads. And the same deal. We might just do like three or four clicks back. We don't want to get rid of much of those transients in there. Okay, now we can see all our markers are looking pretty good, fairly tidy. What we're gonna do next is zoom in on the drums and just nudge them forwards or back depending if the drums are ahead of the beat or behind the beat. This is gonna save flex time snapping it to the wrong beat markers and it's gonna save you a bit of editing time. So we're looking for that sweet spot. So we're gonna zoom in and we can see the drums are, for the most part, a little bit ahead of the beat. So. We, we don't want to nudge this too much because there's a lot of stuff that's still on the beat. So let's just click on one of our tracks. It's going to select them all because we've got the group running. Now hold down option and we're going to push the right arrow on the keyboard. Might just do two nudges. It's looking pretty good. Now the next step, press I. It's going to open up our inspector. Now at the top here in region, open up that of its closed and come down to quantize. Make sure your drums are highlighted. Come up and click on quantize and we're going to set the note value for what flex time is going to snap to. So for me, usually it's 16th notes. We're going to click on that and we can see flex time has now snapped it to the grid. Now, if you don't want 100% strength on the quantization, you can come down to the bottom here and in Q strength, you can write the percentage you want. So you could go 50% and it changes how much is pulling it to the beat out here. So you can play around with that to find your sweet spot. I'm just going to go over 100 for this, make it super tight. Now, let's have a quick listen and see how well this has worked. Awesome, sounds super tight, and that's exactly what we want for a song like this. Now, if we have a little look here, you can see this doesn't look quite right. There's a bit of a weird gap in the marker here. So what we can do is get our eraser tool, and we can erase that, because that doesn't look quite right. If anything, this might need to nudge over a little bit like that. We can see a bit of a transient here and here, and a bit of a roll off the cymbals. Let's have a look at a section where flex time may not have nailed it. 
Okay, so there's a couple of notes there that have been pulled forward and they're not sounding right, sounding pretty glitchy and gross. When you picked your take, it probably sounded pretty good, but there's always going to be little things that get snapped to the wrong beat. So what we need to do is get our eraser tool. I like to put it on the second option here and then I hold down command and I'm just going to rub that out. And then what I can do is I can just manually click in the middle here, drag it over and fix up that note. There's always going to be a little bit of manual work with flex time to get it right. Let's have a listen to that. Again, there's a note here. Same deal, rub it out, push it over. Great. Now, if you come across some stuff like this where the kick and the snare are flaming slightly, you got two hits that are meant to be bang on top of each other. What you're gonna need to do is open up your mixer, turn off the group on the kicks, no group, and then you can come back out here we can drag our snare over. Now if flex time pops up a weird little marker like this right here, which we don't want, just use your eraser and get rid of it. Don't try and drag past it. If you drag past it, sometimes the group goes crazy and everything goes out of phase. So just erase it and then drag again. And that's how you can get out of the group to fix little things. And then you can come back and you can put your kicks back in group one. And that's all there is to it. Now you just have to listen through your track and fine tune it and get rid of any of those bad edits that Flex Time's made until it's sounding super tight and tidy. Once you have edited it all, what I like to do is I don't like to leave Flex Time running. It uses up CPU and once I've edited it, I'm not really gonna go back and change it. I've never found myself going back to drums and fixing them. You do it once, you do it right, and then you commit. So what I would do is I'd go to the end of the track and then I'm gonna make a slice here. So let's grab our scissors and just do a little cut. Now drag and select all of these tracks, come up to edit, down to bounce and join, join per tracks. We hit that. Non-contiguous audio regions require the creation of a new audio file. Create, let's hit it. And now that's just gonna render those in place. It's gonna flatten out all of our flex time edits and then we can turn flex time off and save a bit of CPU. And that's it guys, it's as simple as that. You just have to make sure they're phase locked, then you have to tidy up the transient detection, quantize it to the note value and strength that you want, and then go through and do any manual edits that need tidying up. If you're like me, do a little cut on the end, then join those tracks back together, and you're gonna flatten your flex time in place. All right, cheers guys. If you have any suggestions on things you'd like to see me cover in a video, drop it in a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.